along. So it's the first sidecar race of the day with custom hoist tyre. As of gate one is the 11A of Kenny Hamill and Daniel Bradley on the Miller Yamaha R1. Gate two, 27B of Craig Bowler and Ann Plummer on the own built Suzuki GSXR. Gate three, the 9A of Carl Rasek and Tyler Berger in the Les Plummer Yamaha R1. Gate four, the 6A of Fearless and Jason Hurra on the Match Honda CBR. So we come for the first band, first race at Rosebank Speedway for the year. Getting ready to go. Right, lining up. Glenn Bay Shaw, the keenest one out here on the outside. There's Dylan Nine and Sean Mason there with Jamie away in the South Island currently. Gonna get a few runs. Hopefully, we get to run today after Moore Park was cancelled last night. I haven't sort of seen an update from today whether they're running or not. But as we get ready to go for the second sidecar race of the day. Start. Daniel Hanley on that 28 bike. 
Yeah, they are. And they seem just to be able to run a few more different lines. And talking to some of the swingers, there's a lot less work for most of them. So it's sort of really cool just to have a little bit different. Um, you know, I guess it's also been, when you look around, you don't hear anything like the scream of that Denko or the Norton or the Triumph anymore. But uh, the biggest change for me was that Yamaha R1 came in, because that was quite a different sound, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. I miss the sound of the classics, but the, the new new bikes are certainly scream machines. <laughs> yeah, they certainly are. It's, it's, it's cool to still see that they are running at different places. You know, recently I was down in Napier for that sprint car round and for the midgets as well. In both of those meetings, they run sidecars for those. So it's cool to see that, I guess, Central North Island is still running on the clay tracks down there. And we've got guys coming up here, up here to run on the bike tracks. Have you got a preference for sidecars? Would you like to see them on our surface? like here, more park or Eddie, or I'd like to see them on the clay tracks? I prefer seeing them on the little Rosebank tracks. I think they get, they put on more of a show, the more excitement on this track. Yeah, they do. They seem to sort of seem to struggle a little bit on the clay at times, and it's obviously, we see a number of sidecar meetings I've been to that have been abandoned partway through just due, due to, you know, the clay, and unfortunately the cars wear the track a bit differently to what uh, the bikes and the sidecars do. Yeah, absolutely. The, the clay certainly knocks them around when the track goes off a bit. So, yeah, it was like when they ran at the springs, you know, it was just they were all over the place. I really felt for them because it would have been nice to see them back at the springs performing in the manner that they used to years ago. Yeah, I guess uh, as, as growing up, I remember whole um, international solo meetings before the cars when they had the solo troops, so, you know, whole test, make, test matches for solos. Side cars were a huge part, you know, um, JJ and that was my hero as a kid. Um, and all of those guys that came through. So it's sort of really cool to see a lot of these guys through. And it's good to see a few younger ones coming through, but a lot of these older guys coming back. When I did some research a few years ago, New Zealand titles from 10, 15 years ago, they've all jumped back on sidecars again. Yeah, there's a lot coming out of the cupboard, out of retirement, and back running again, and they're running really, really good too. Uh, I've seen quite a few, uh, as you say, that uh, were heroes when we were around, and they're, they're, they're back again running, and they're very competitive. I guess moving to a two-wheeled class, like me, I know you over the years have been a big supporter of, of Jake Turner. Uh, pretty cool to see what he's been doing in Australia, that uh, Oceania meeting. He grabbed five points out of the class of that field was was pretty impressive, and it's um, been really good to be able to follow him in his racing, just something a little bit different for us. And I think probably moving away from New Zealand to go over there, it's put it back on focus. He always had the talent here, but just whether his focus was there. Yeah, absolutely. I think Jake's got his focus back by going to Australia. He's certainly uh, putting huge effort in to get to where he's getting. It's just a shame he keeps saying he's disappointed when he's actually doing, I think he's doing very well. And it won't be long before we start seeing him winning over there, I'm sure of it. Yeah, it is. A, you know, when I look, especially that Oceania field, I look at the quality of that field and went, holy crap, just, just to be in that field was a privilege, let alone to gain five points. Oh, absolutely. He, he, he certainly didn't do himself any um, disjustice in what he did there. He actually stood out in the crowd, I feel. It was really good. And having what you've done for so many years, is it sort of pretty proud for you being, you know, I know you've supported Jake from, I've seen, always seen your logo on his, on his suit from way, way back. So it must be pretty proud to be able to see the support you've given coming to fruition now. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's a couple of them I've supported since they were juniors when they first started racing. And to see where they are today is absolutely amazing. And, you know, it does make you proud that uh, you've been part of their career of uh, getting to the level that they're at now. Absolutely. Well, I know you're as bad as me. I see your tracks all over the place. So um, it's, it's really cool. Um, I guess we all have this passion for Speedway and it's cool to see you here. Um, if they if want to have a look at your photos, where do they go after the meeting? Uh, mainly, I only post on Instagram now, JDS Imagery Speedway. So go along and have a look after the meeting, some pretty awesome photos. And uh, just really look, and thanks for that. Yeah, thanks. Bryce, Tim and Ian, just working there together, just pretty cool to see Evan racing all his guys on the infield.
and the different starting positions, do you think that might also be an issue for some of those guys if they haven't run here that often they'll sort of set themselves a little bit further forward and maybe not quite get the drop off the tapes? Yeah, well the guys who race on clay when we um, do our starts down there, the swing is usually right up over the top of the rider, you know, to break loose because clay's usually driving on the start. But with um, this dirt, you know, the swing has got to be back a bit more. And it also depends on when you pull up, um, if there's any um, uh, tyre grooves in the track too, because you don't want to get too close to them, because sometimes they can put you off your mark when you drop the clutch, you can drop into an old tyre groove, and sometimes it can either shoot you infield or make you put a wheel stand. It's um, you, you sort of got to know where you got to sit. Yeah, it is. I went to Napier the other week and saw you guys run down there, so you sort of bit of a different format, isn't it, where you sort of very quick turnaround down there just to get the sidecars out before the cars bugger the racetrack for you. So, um, you know, how did, how did you guys get on down there and sort of seem to have a reasonable run? Yeah, we had a reasonable run. We had a couple of wins and a third. Um, didn't have the bike set up. I was driving home uh, back from Napier that night and the picture ended up in my head that I didn't have my jockey wheel set up how I should be, so the bike was standing too straight up and down instead of leant over and I was figuring out why I couldn't get around the freaking corner, but yeah, now I've got it all set up right now and she's handling nice tonight. So again, it was the best pairs down there. Where did you sort of end up in that? I, I was stuck on the infield and the ute looked to look after safety, which lucky I didn't have to see you guys, so that was a good thing. But um, the, where did you end up finishing in the best pairs? Uh, we ended up finishing third. We got teamed up with a Palmerston pairing. Actually, uh, the guy, uh, Josh Henderson, who swings on one of the classics, he's actually started to swing on for a guy, Neil Bruce, in Palmerston North. So he's swinging on a modern down there. And we were teamed up with him at Napier. That's pretty cool when you see um, these guys. I know we've talked before, obviously concentrating today on the on the main sidecar, but good to see both. Maybe when you get both here, I know it's a hell of a day for you. I'm um, get pretty exhausted as to that. Um, what changes do you have to make when you run from jumping off the, onto the classic from from the from the sort of side modern sidecar? Uh, well, well starting different gears, like I usually start in second and third. The classic got to start in first and second. And when I change gear on my modern, I've got a hand change, but on the classic, I've got to use my foot. So yeah, sometimes it's a bit of a muck up. I try and reach for the hand changer and think, oh no, shit, that's right, it's foot. Yeah, I, do, I sort of do notice. I really had a look. Um, Obviously here I don't get to look from the infield much, but um, down in Napier I've been on the infield having a look, and some of those uh, right legs, you're sort of right sort of kneeling down on there, which is very, very different to how you sit on a on a classic, because it's sort of, do you find one more comfortable than the other, or? Uh, well, my bike, uh, my classic's also a kneeler, so, but a lot of the guys up here, they're, they're not, and I've, I've had a ride on um, Pete Anagar's Honda, and that's actually pretty comfortable to ride. Yeah, you're, you're sitting up, it feels a bit funny, it feels like you, it wants to tip all the time because you're sitting up so high, but they don't, they handle well. Yeah, and I guess, just just like I say, watching the way these new bikes, we, we notice, you know, look at photos now, you guys are, as riders, are sort of way down, trying to bring the bike around, doing a lot, lot of work as well, you know, it seems to be the swingers work a lot more in the, in the classics, whereas it seems to be the rider does a lot more work in the modern sidecar, would that be a, a good description? Um, well, on the moderns, the swinger doesn't have to move as much because they're, they're set up so fine that it's only a light movements that the swinger has to do, unless the track's really, you know, slick or drivey. But um, the old the old classics, yeah, the swingers have really got to work on them. they got to move backwards and forwards and brake drive, gain drive. It's um, it, it's good. I love it. And so just, just for, I guess, I know sitting in the crowd there, a few of my sort of friends from the Springs who may not know too much with sidecars and other bits and pieces, they just want to get some racing because nowhere else is racing. So just um, with your setups for between the track and here, do you, do you lengthen the bike, shorten the bike, change the chair wheel? Um, well, no, I run the same length everywhere because the bike loves the length it's set at at the moment. Uh, we just got to go from 19 inch uh, tyres on dirt and when we go to clay, we run 17 inch road wets. Um, a little bit more different setup. Sometimes we stand them up a bit, depends on how much banking's on the track and just different tyre pressures, that's probably about it. Um, oh, you can, some of the bikes you can move the jockey wheel, so a bit of that, and yeah, some people move the, the, the steering head to the front end, but I sort of don't muck around with that. Yeah, it seems to work for you, like a couple of wins and the results from Nate shows that it works there and everything else. All right, well, thanks for the chat, and uh, good luck for the rest of the day in the New Zealands. Yeah, cheers, mate, thanks a lot. Thank you.
uh, the AFL James McDonald 16 of uh, Blake Harris. Both families have quite a bit of green speedway. They come back around now, green flag drops and off they go. Cars running with three for number nine. They come back from the start as the AFL James McDonald takes the lead. Oh, that's a great Now he's carried on just a little bit. Flip for a couple of cars on the way through. Oh, 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 oh,